you know, nobody says anything about it. Even the abusive person can't see anything in front. And that's how they grow up kids. And that's, at least, I guess you think it's okay, but it's not. So it's nice to um, talk about it, you know, like attending a residential school. And it was so abusive there for so many people. For, and um, like the, when they were abused there and when they c come back, when a person can't talk about it, then they start drinking, drowning their sorrows on alcohol. And when they start abusing their partners, you know, and kids are small, running around, even three, four year old can remember that how their their moms were treated. And that's why I said that residential school, I blame it on it myself because a little kid to see that stuff and she's collecting it while she's um, growing up. She can't forget it. And that's what he does, start doing because nobody talks to them about it. That we made a lot of mistakes as a young couple when they were growing up and we asked them for forgiveness and and then uh, we had a feast after. We get together and we asked for forgiveness. Yeah, the, that's how that a couple break up, eh? just because of that abuse. Verbally even, we treat it somewhat mentally and spiritually. I wouldn't like it if the if wife, uh, your partner treated you like that. What would you do if she treated you like what you're treating her? This is nice. We work long in our marriage. This is where learning comes from. Not a lot of people have people tell them what to do, so they don't know anything. This is where we teach them what to do, to communicate. This is where things come from, communicating. You won't know what I'm doing if I'm not telling you. This is where difficulty comes from, not talking to each other. I worked with two men, and for nothing, they would they would fight their wives after checking their nets. That the woman didn't cook any food because he was looking after her kids. It's difficult to live in a tent, a fear of children falling into the water when they wake up. And the woman couldn't cook anything for nothing. The men would hit them. So we would talk to them not to do that. The woman is busy during the day looking after the kids. She does a lot of work. It's like working 24 hours. A child, when he wakes up, the woman has to get up looking after the children. And that the man expects him to start preparing food for the husband and hitting him for nothing, for not doing anything. It's good to sit down, talk peacefully with somebody. Just like in our relationship, nobody told us anything. Just like us, nobody told us anything, uh, but we were mature. And um, my wife was taught by looking after her siblings, myself, I'm the only man, myself and my sister. So we grew up peacefully and I married early. 
We lived peacefully. I treated her well. Every morning, I used to cook her breakfast because I know that she's done a lot raising our children, 10 children, and she looked after them well. It's nice that when nothing is bothering her, bothering them, children grow well. So much happening in our communities to um, give her some um, difficulty. When we were growing up, it wasn't like that. When we grew up, there was no road, but now there's roads coming from all over the place. Now we have people coming from all over the place, bringing bad stuff into the community. This is um, now different compared to when we were growing up. A lot of bad stuff happening. It's difficult now, whereas back in the day, it was so beautiful. People used to live so peacefully. This is how I've known it to be. This is what we usually tell them to try and communicate with one another, because this is the only way that they will know, is by communicating with one another. When you're doing things secretly, when your wife doesn't know what you're doing, it um, doesn't go well because the wife doesn't know what is happening. If the woman wanted to buy something, then something like that. They need to talk peacefully. That's a good thing, talking peacefully. Talking to each other, what is happening. We try and tell them as much as we can, as uh, the extent of my knowledge so that the relationship will go well. We also tell them, try not to be bossy, to be throwing out orders. I knew a couple of men, and one man would hold out his cup and say, give me some tea. He was more than capable of um, pouring tea for himself. He wouldn't even um, put on his own slippers. So that's what we try and tell them not to try and, and be um, too bossy. So that's what we try and tell them. We all live differently. There are some men who are very bossy and that are very cruel to them, basically not treating their wives well, yelling at their wives a lot. When you're married, you have to learn how to communicate. And it's not just, I want it this way, I want it that way. And I see marriages break down, and I see them strong. But all, all it takes is just to be communicative. And um, to understand each other, you can't be the boss of one thing and the other the other way. It's got to be together. You've got to understand each other. You can't compete. And Another thing, like I said this morning, when I was so there, I was talking about the uh, gospel a little bit. And all, all I was thinking, talking about was the voice, the way you use your voice to your partner, to your children, to anybody, anybody that comes into the house. That's another thing that's very important in uh, young couples planning to get married, is the way they speak to each other. 
because criticizing breaks down everything. Breaks you, just tears you up. Do you leave each other? Why? I think just because one of them they wanted to be a boss and the other one they didn't cooperate. It wasn't like before. It was different. I seen that. They're supposed to be happy they were living together so many years ago. No? But uh, communication, I think, was just gone. And so one time I asked my husband, my husband said, I wanted to do this, I wanted to go out, and he told me, well, I didn't read your mind. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so we know how to come in and meet after that. Because other times I wanted something like uh, I want to go for a picnic or stuff like that. And he was doing other things. And so I, have to, I wanted to do my own thing too, what I like. He was really a good guy. He used to make coffee for me every morning when he's not working, when he retired. Even when he was working and I was working as a listed in Palakan. He was he's always made breakfast for me and he said, what do you want for breakfast? So we told those people, a young couple, uh, how to respect their partners, not to hurt them, not to talk to, not to talk uh, loud, stuff like that. I've been married for 50 years. And my husband and I, we, ever since we've met, we respected our space. Our space, we respected our, our uh, the way we talk to each other, how we uh, look after each other. Uh, we're, we just don't flare up and, and say mean things and then walk away. It, that's not the way to do it. That's respect. Respecting the other person's uh, feelings is uh, uh, maybe the anger he's facing at the moment. You know, you, you just don't walk away. You try to figure out, okay, you're mad, okay, tell me why are you mad? Why are you being mean to me? You know, so you have to have a common ground. There's got to be boundaries. Got to be boundaries. That's respect when you have boundaries. Boundaries are where um, you let her know you have your own space. This is me and this is him. So if you cross into my boundary that you do something to hurt me, that, that that's wrong. That's not allowed. That's not acceptable in my in my space. So I have to let them know you can't come and do that to me or you can't come and say that to me because I don't deserve it. And in his space, I can't go to his space and say all kinds of mean things to him and then walk away because that's a, a total disrespect, a total uh, going into his space and just being a bully or whatever of yours. Let me tell you, uh, I'd rather be slapped than be abused with words because words never heal. So you have to be very careful in what you say to each other. I'd say uh, um, you have to do something. You have to look for something what will help you. You can go anywhere you want to go for help, but ask for help. You will probably send you somewhere to go for help, and then you'll realize what do you what do you want to be. Do you want to be in that relationship or you don't want to be in that relationship? Do you want to help yourself to get better? Go out in a, uh, out in a lake, drive around in a boat, go fishing or go hunting. There's a lot of ways you can, you can deal with your, yourself. 
to deal with your soul. There's a lot of ways. There's a lot of elders that you can go to that can give you good advice. But it's up to you. If you, if you really want what you got and keep it, you have to deal with it. Mm. You have to, you have to um, deal with your own, whatever is bothering you. Angry management is really good. And self-care too, even for young men, how to look after themselves. I can tell you where to go, talk to somebody, but it's you that, to, you have to help yourself. Crying. You need crying too, and then after you feel better. <laughs> so what I would say to a young couple is to be yourself. Nobody can make you do whatever you don't want to do. You got to put your mind to it. Because the mind is a very, it's very powerful. Okay, love is uh, compromising, like compromising, like you you have, you always consider your your partner's feeling and you take care of that feeling, that love of yours. Whether you have to come last, they come first, that's what you do. In his other way, it goes the same way, vice versa. Love is sacrificing for your children, your husband, everybody that's around you. And you treat them with the utmost respect, the utmost love you can show. Either, either even by feeding them, offering them something. I try to convince them that there is help. There is always help and hope that they're not alone and that they can change. The women can change if they want to. If the man can't change, well, the woman has to because she's the caretaker of the home and the children. She's the protector.